What's going on, guys? How you been having a great day out there, guys? We got a little shop time work here. We're gonna work on a little update, guys. I've been using the High Tech RDX4 charger here for I don't know a couple months now, and honestly. Things have been working great. Love it. Awesome to charge up four things at a time. Kind of reset up my bench a little bit here. Got a nice Team Corrali mat. But guys, we're going to do a little work on a few cars here. Now, as you guys can see, I got a few bits and pieces of parts. Also have recently ordered a whole bunch of new gears. Um, I was so short on pinion gears. I wasn't able to gear a lot of cars up. I ordered some Saga ones, a bag, a big bag of variety ones. I ordered some HR... I can't remember what it was, like HRX, another company. Trying some different ones out to see which ones hold it the best. I mean, we all know Sagas work awesome, um, but I'm also trying out some of these other different brands that look like they're actually some decent ones. But we're going to do a little upgrade here and a few repairs because I had the Outcast uh, 4S out today for a little motocross bashing, guys. <laughs> this thing performed awesome, but eventually we did kill, I think it's this side. Yeah, the shock. Um, you guys can see down in there. The shock piston is no longer connected to the shock rod end. <laughs> Had a blowout. So we're going to do a little work on the shocks. And now uh, that brings up this piece. I just got a little bit from M2C Racing here. This is the valve, the piston kit for all of the Arma 4S, um, you know, basically all the shock pistons for all the Arma 4S line. It's for the Creighton, Outcast, uh, Mojave, and all of them. Um, so we're going to get this installed. Since I got to pull the shocks off anyway, I figured we're going to go ahead, do a little shock maintenance and a little shock work to it and uh, get them working a little bit better. The, Suspension isn't too bad on the 4S, but it definitely needs a little bit of valving adjustment. So we're going to go work on that. And then these shiny bits that I was holding first are for the Mojave. Um, last couple of videos we had out with the Mojave. Um, last time it performed great. Actually, I really didn't have anything other than I busted the center brace and a few little things. But the plastic from Pillow Bell um, knuckles here. I'm sure there's probably a better name for them, but, you know, I always forget. But at any rate... We got aluminum ones. Now, I have I don't put these on all the cars. I have them on a couple of my Creighton XLs, but on the Mojave, they've been popping out. And once they start popping out, they pretty much continually do it. Um, and since I pretty much beat the snot out of this poor car, I figure we're going to go aluminum to keep those things from popping out all the time. So we're going to do a little work on the Mojave, a little work on the Outcast 4S, and see what else we can get into. So stay tuned, everybody. Now, this kit I got, I got it off of uh, eBay. You know, I know there's, um, you know, a lot of the major name ones out there, but but try not some of the odd and dead, odds and ends ones out there, you know, the less uh, popular, just to see what they're like um, and try them out. Uh, I forget, honestly, what Brandis was. It was on eBay. Comes with a new set of bearings. They look pretty nice. I also used a set similar to this. Um, oh, it was on my V... What is this, my V1 Crate and XL? I got these red anodized ones, and they have been working out great. Have no complaints with them. So we'll see how these ones work out. Now, the last bash with the Mojave, um, this thing took an absolute thrashing down at the skate park. Gears were making a little bit of weird noise. I thought my, my center diff um, gear here was messed up or the pinion, but everything looks pretty good. I mean, the center one looks a little bit marked up. I ordered a new one, and I have it pinned on my shelf over there with my other parts. I haven't changed it out yet, though, because it's not in that bad of shape, and I don't know, it doesn't sound that bad. A little noise doesn't doesn't hurt anybody, right? <laughs> but other than that, uh, this is what I bust. I busted off the rear um, center brace end. I ordered a set of aluminum ones, but I didn't put them on there yet. I'm going to go ahead and run the plastic ones, and the next time I break them, I'll change them out to aluminum and see how that works out. But let's go ahead and get these front pillow balls out of here and get these front changed out, because... I think it was this side that just kept constantly popping out. It was getting kind of annoying, but I've been amazed, guys. The Mojave, it just keeps on kicking. I'm not going to bore you guys with uh, sitting here recording all this. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this, get this apart, and I'll show you what that uh, looks like with the first new one on there. All right, well, we got our all pulled apart here. Got the first one out, and you're looking over the machining on this. I mean, honestly, it looks really nice. Um, they have the O-ring on the pillow ball retainers here. Um, the adjusters so they should stay in place so the only thing i'm going to use loctite on or is this screw over here in order to keep that thing from moving around now i just noticed an interesting little bit to this that i didn't notice until now these aluminum ones um already have the arm you know obviously machined in with it because normally you screw this red piece onto that but i actually gotta take that off and mount this directly to that so that eliminates a couple screws I know this is probably obvious, but these screws on your steering links definitely use Loctite.
All right, we got the first one fitted up on there and it fit up great. Uh, machining, everything seems really nice. The tolerances are great. By the way, these things were only 23 bucks for the whole set. Uh, it was a company called Monster Kings on eBay sell these. Um, the whole set, like I said, comes with everything and the bearings, which is really nice. So whenever you're changing that, you can get new bearings put in there. So, I mean, I don't think it's too bad of a price. There's like 23.88 or something like that for both sets. So we'll give them a try. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change out the other side here now that this side is done. be nice not having those pillar balls rip out of there and having to snap those back in there again. I'm going to go ahead and do the other front one, and then we will move on to the front suspension of the Outcast for us and get the new M2C Racing valve kit in here. And I'm probably going to use, I'm not sure what oils do I have over here. I got some 60s and 70s, 50, got a good variety. Probably going to go with, I don't know, either 50 or 60, one of the two. All right, well, that's a nice upgrade we got on the Mojave now. I won't have to be dealing with these popping out all the time. Now it'll probably just break an AOM or something stupid, but at least the pillow balls won't be ripping out anymore. And yes, guys, the Mojave gets the snot beat out of it. Anytime that I decide I want to go do something really dumb and something I know I'm going to, like, be very rough on the car, the Mojave, the majority of the times, is the one I bust out. So this car sees a ton of abuse. As you guys can see with my lovely power switch down here that I made a little trough and then glued it in there because it no longer has the top piece. <laughs> Bugs are there, but the rest of it's not. But the Mojave still lives. Now a normal person would probably go and wash this thing and clean it up and make it look all pretty right before working on it. But yeah, not me. We're going to go ahead and hopefully fix this. I got to see if I have any shock rod. I hope I do to fit this thing um or if i can get that screwed back in there because i believe i can't remember if these are all one piece or not in this car well pull it off and find out okay well we got it out of there luckily the uh shock rod is slightly bent so when i pull that out of there i'm gonna have to straighten that up a little bit with the old hammer and a rag but the rest of it looks like a good shape. I think I have these style ends. Um, they're kind of the common ones with some of the other models. Spring isn't, uh, I bent the spring back a little bit. It's a little crooked, but I'm gonna go ahead and tear this thing apart, get this thing opened up here, find the new shock rod end, and I'll bring you guys back when we're installing the pistons. All right, well, I found the actual stock Outcast 4S for a shock rod end. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismantle this thing, pop the, uh, the ball out of this thing. Again, most of you guys probably do. If you don't have a set of these, pick yourself up a set. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Holding on to shock rods and popping these little balls out of your plastic ends makes life so much easier. Well, this is awesome. I looked at my uh, my travel parts spin that I take usually whenever I go out bashing. It has, you know, tools and parts and all kinds of good stuff. I looked in there and I had a brand new shock shaft. So I don't have to beat it straight with a hammer. And if you're wondering what the part number is, at least this is for the front. The ARA330706. I can't stress this part enough, guys. If you're changing out your valves in here, and when you pull this apart, there is a little washer right there on the end. Do not lose that, because if you put it back together without that little washer on there, you will start punching your rod through your piston and basically splitting that thing in half or punching it through there. So we got a little O-ring on the new M2C Racing valve kit here. We're going to go ahead and get these things installed. And I'm pretty positive... Um, that the slots always face down on these things. Basically, there's numbers on them. Um, but anyway, the little slots face downwards. Okay, well, we got the first one all together here. Well, almost together. We got the new shaft. We got the new shock rod end. And uh, we got some new oil in here. And what I did, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do 50 or 60, I mixed them. Yeah, I mixed uh, 50 and 60. So we got somewhere around a 55 in here. <laughs> I don't know if it works that way, honestly. But we're going to try it. Um, we're going to mix a little red and blue and see how she feels. Um, if it feels too heavy, I'm not sure because on the forest car, obviously, they're lighter than the 6S car. If this was a 6S car with the valve kit, I would definitely do 60 or 70 all around or 60 in the front and 70 in the rear. But on this, I was figuring I wanted to go a little bit lighter. But we're just going to do a little mixture and see how she, how she works. All right. We got the other shock pulled off of here. The shock is now the cleanest thing on this car. Kind of doesn't belong, but we're going to go ahead and get the other front done. I'm not going to go through and bore you guys with all of the shock ones here, but I figured I'd go through the front here real quick and uh, see how the suspension feels now after changing out because the front was honestly the softest part of the car. The back doesn't feel too bad on this car, but the front feels extremely soft and squishy, and it chassis slaps pretty bad. 
So real quickly, I figured I'd go over just to show you the differences on the shock pistons here. So this is the stock one. And as you guys can see on both sides, it just has four holes on either side that allow the fluid to push through there. Now, obviously, the size of those holes, the amount of holes and everything dictate how fast your fluid is flowing through there and how much dampening and all that you're getting in your shocks. Now, I'm no shock expert. I'm just trying to explain it the best, best I can. M2C Racing shock pistons here. You have your four holes on top. But on the bottom, you have your four holes, but also these little plastic valves that when they get pressure on them, they put pressure on that O-ring on the outside that help keep it sealed and dampened. Um, it's just, it, there's different size holes and everything. And uh, you know, every car that I put the M2C Racing Valve Kit on, the suspension just feels amazing. And also on the 6S cars, doing the emulsion shock uh, setup just, just feels beautiful. I had that on... Quite a few of my cars. I got it on the Team Corrali, the Spark now. I have it on the Techno ET48.3. I have it on the Techno ET48, uh, or ET48 2.0. Um, I think uh, on the Jackhammer also. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this last shock, get it back together, and uh, we'll test and see how the front feels. And uh, can't wait to take this thing back for their bash. I think I also got glue some tires. I had a couple tire blowouts today on my LPs, unfortunately. All right, boys and girls. Well, we got the front all done, and the front feels so much better. When you start giving it the harder hits, you feel that valving kick in. I think the oil feels pretty good for this size car, especially once the battery's in here. Um, I don't think it's too thick of oil at all. So 50 or 60 with the valve kit so far. Now, obviously, we'll have to test it out under bashing and see how she continues to, you know, how, how it performs, how much slap we get, and go from there. But overall... I think the 55 or whatever you want to call it we put in here feels pretty good. Um, so got the front done. I'm going to finish up, get the back done, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish that off camera. But I hope you guys enjoyed the little shop video today. Got a few things fixed up, got a few upgrades done, and I'm uh, going to go ahead and I think pretty much that's it. The rest of the fleet is all in good working order. Need to get a couple bodies. The Outcast Forest body seen better days. The Mojave body seen better days. But other than that, everything else is good. Unfortunately, today I tried to take the Techno... ET48.2.0 to the motocross track, but I got down there and realized I forgot the controller that is on that. <laughs> so another bash, another day. But also one other thing on the Crowley Asuga XLR, I re-geared this thing. I put a 17 tooth on it right now. I might drop it down to like a 16, but holy cow does that thing rip, guys. I mean, that thing just flies. So and I also geared the Spark up to a 16, I believe, that I have on there. Because I want to get it geared up because I want to really get some good ramp launches with that car. But I hope you guys enjoyed a little shop video here today. Got a few things done. Got some stuff fixed. But that's going to do for tonight. So until next time, y'all, be safe. Be careful out there. Peace out, everybody.